Hey, it's Alex from Android Central, and this is the Sony Xperia Z1. The Xperia Z1 is Sony's latest smartphone, and it's their flagship device for late 2013. At a glance, it looks a lot like the earlier Xperia Z, but take a closer look and there's a lot of new stuff going on. First up, the design. It's a lot more comfortable to hold thanks to the rounded edges, and this frame is now made out of aluminium, not soft-touch plastic. That means it's easier to slip in and out of your pocket, and it doesn't collect as much dust and lint. So it's more or less the same shape and size as the Z, but it feels a lot more solid in the hand thanks to the improved build quality. Once again, it's a glass back device, which looks great and gives the phone a nice sense of symmetry. But Sony still fix these non-removable screen protectors, which means both sides of the phone have a slightly plasticky feel. It also means the phone's more prone to picking up dust and fingerprints than most, though again that's not quite as bad as the original Xperia Z. So the front and back are relatively featureless, but on the sides you can see the usual ports and connectors. There's a speaker down below, power, volume and camera buttons on the right, along with the SIM tray. Up top's your headphone jack, and on the left, behind these clip-out doors, are your micro SD slot and micro USB port. They're hidden behind these doors because the Z1 is water and dust resistant, rated IP58. That means you can dunk it in the sink or use it in the rain without any ill effect. But there's a bit of added inconvenience when you need to charge it. The way around that is to use this magnetic charging port with the official charging dock from Sony. On the front of the Xperia Z1 is a 5-inch triluminous 1080p display that uses Sony's latest display technology. So it's a big screen, and as you can see, the bezels on this thing are pretty substantial too, especially at the top and bottom. That means it might not be the best phone for people with small hands. The display quality itself is generally very good. It's sharp, crisp, and clear, with colours that are bright but not overblown, and very deep blacks. There's one big problem though, viewing angles. It's yet another Sony phone that struggles with off-angle viewing, tilt it just a little in any direction and things become washed out. So it's not quite the best screen you'll see this year, but it still looks pretty good. On the inside, things get even more impressive with a quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU running the show, making the Xperia Z1 one of the fastest Android phones around. That's backed up by 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage, expandable through that microSD slot. The result of all that horsepower is a phone that's flawlessly smooth and incredibly quick in even the most demanding apps. It's also got the latest Adreno 330 GPU and PlayStation 3 controller support, so the Xperia Z1 should make an excellent gaming phone. There's a 3000 mAh battery inside too, which should keep the Z1 running for longer than its predecessor. And all the power management features from earlier Sony phones are made it across, including stamina mode. The other big thing the Xperia Z1 has going for it is its camera. It's a 20.7 megapixel XMRR shooter behind a Sony G lens, although the camera app is geared towards taking oversampled 8 megapixel shots. Which makes sense, you don't often need a full 20 megapixel photo from your phone. Though if you do, you can still switch to manual mode and shoot a gigantic image. All the various scene modes require you to switch down to 8 megapixels though, as does the superior auto mode that most people will be using. There are a few cool AR modes built into the camera app too. One lets you add characters like dinosaurs and leprechauns to your photos. Another one works like Google Goggles, letting you find out more about the stuff you're shooting. On the software side, we're running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean and Sony's own UI, which doesn't stray too far from Google's design language. There are a lot of subtle changes and new animations compared to earlier Sony skins, and the result is it feels a lot more fluid and dynamic than before. You still get on-screen buttons and easy access to Google Now, as well as a handful of windowed apps to choose from through this bar in the task switcher. There are also a bunch of apps to make use of Sony's content ecosystem, including the Walkman Music app, PlayStation Mobile, and Video Unlimited. New additions on the Z1 include Xperia Lounge, which clues you into deals for Xperia owners, a new sketch app ported over from the Xperia Z Ultra, which lets you scribble on your photos or create drawings from scratch, complete with face parts and other wacky stuff. Unfortunately, Sony doesn't seem to have ironed out all the bugs in the Z1 software before release, though. On our first day with the phone, we ran into an OS crash, and the next day a particularly nasty bug cropped up which required a factory reset. So hopefully these will be fixed soon. So that's a quick look at the Sony Xperia Z1. Despite the software issues, it's easily the best Sony phone so far, and also one of the best Android phones out there at the moment. We'll have a full review written up for you in the days ahead, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.